So in this video, I'll show you how to write electron configurations using the periodic table. But first, we're going to learn some of the basics of, of an electron configuration. Uh, I think there are three main components to an electron configuration. The principal quantum number, sometimes called the shell, uh, the orbital types, and the number of electrons. Then I'll give you an example of an electron configuration. And then finally, we'll relate that electron configuration to the periodic table. Here is an electron configuration for a neutral carbon atom. What I want to do is dissect this electron configuration and show you those three components. Uh, I think it's important to ask how many electrons are in the atom or even an ion, because we'll talk about ions also. Well, if we're talking about a neutral carbon atom, there are six electrons. And now if we dissect that electron configuration, it reads 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Uh, the superscripts represent the number of electrons. The letters represent the orbitals, and the orbitals are the shape of space around the nucleus in which the electrons are located. And then the numbers, the large integer numbers in front of the letters, uh, that's the principal quantum number, sometimes called a shell. Now, it's called a shell, but I don't want you to think of this as like a tortoise shell, like an enclosure. What I want you to think of when you see the principal quantum number or that integer number in front of the letter, those numbers simply give you a sense of the relative distance the electrons are from the nucleus and the relative energy the electrons have. So the higher the number, the further the electrons are away from the nucleus and the higher the energy of the electrons. Something that I didn't formally point out in this PowerPoint, um, when one says 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, those are examples of subshells. Here's how electron configurations relate to the periodic table. The first two groups, groups 1a and 2a, um, take care of the s orbital. Um, the groups 3a to 8a take care of the p orbitals. Uh, and the transition metals, all the B groups take care of the D, and the inner transition metals take care of the F. Notice how the period number, 1 through 7, corresponds to the principal quantum number, 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, 6s, and 7s, and 2p down to 7p. But it's slightly offset for the D, and also for the F. And this is something you're going to need to remember. That if an element is in the D region in the fourth period, the D orbital associated to that element is 3D, not 4D. So the Ds are offset by 1, and then the Fs are offset by 2. So if we're talking about an element in the sixth period, think about 4f, not 6f. Also notice there is no such thing as 1p or 1d or 1f or 2d or 1f or 2f or 3f. The p start off at 2. The D start at 3, the F start at 4. What I'll do next is show you how to use the periodic table to write an electron configuration. It's sort of like playing a board game. I'm going to use this periodic table 
make the connection between electron configurations in the periodic table. Here, in this periodic table at the top, is a key to, to remind you of these regions. I'm going to click on carbon, and right above, in this case carbon, you'll see the electron configuration. In fact, I could click on any element, and in this area, in this periodic table, you'll see the electron configuration for that neutral atom. So back to carbon. As mentioned earlier, the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. One way to approach using the periodic table and writing this electron configuration, or coming up with this electron configuration, is starting at hydrogen. And you have to travel through the periodic table to the particular element you want to write the electron configuration for, in this case, carbon. I'm going to click on each element as I get to carbon. And what I'd like for you to do is pay attention to this area here where the electron configuration is written. So if I click on carbon, it says 1s1. Okay, I'm in the S region and I pick up one electron. I go to the next atom, helium. I pick up another electron, so it's 1s2. I'm still in the first period, and I'm in the S region, so 1s2. Then I go down to the second period, to lithium, 1s2, 2s1. Next, beryllium, 1s2, 2s2. Now across to boron. And now we're going to get to the P region. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. And finally, I get to carbon. 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Another detail you could pay attention to as I go through these examples is this area here on the screen. And this gives you a sense of what the orbital shape looks like. So we'll go through carbon again and pay attention to what happens. We're, we're starting out in the S region and the S orbital has a spherical shape. And then when I get to the P region, the P shape takes on what they call a lobe shape. And there are three orientations for this P shape. And then if you get down to an element in the D region, the orbitals look very strange. I'm going to use magnesium as another example. Predict what the electron configuration would be for magnesium based on what I showed you. I'm going to start off at home base or hydrogen and walk through the periodic table until I get to magnesium. So 1s2, 2s2 down to lithium, 1s2, 2s1, beryllium, boron, carbon, etc., until I get to magnesium. The electron configuration for magnesium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. This technique works pretty well for just about every atom. There are some anomalies in the transition and the inner transition metals, but I'm not going to hold you responsible for those anomalies. Just use this technique to predict the electron configurations of neutral atoms and ions. And I'll talk about ions in another video. There isn't much more to electron configuration for ions as there is for neutral atoms. I want to point out that the number of groups correspond to the number of electrons max that could be filled in that particular orbital. In the s orbital we could fit two max, so we have two groups. In the p region, or the p orbitals, we could fit a maximum of six. One, two, three, four, five, six groups. 
and the d orbitals collectively we could fit a max of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And not shown, we would have 14 groups in, for the F region. Let's do another example. Fluorine. Let's verify that the electron configuration for fluorine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. I start off here at hydrogen. And I pass through the 1s region with two electrons. I pass through the 2s region with two electrons. Then I move on to the 2p region and I move one, two, three, four, five groups in or with five electrons. Therefore it's 2p5. Let's try another example. Sulfur. Let's work backwards this time. We see we're in the P region, and we're in the 3P region, and we are 1, 2, 3, 4 electrons in the P region, so we write 3P4. That means we have had to pass through the 3S region with 2 electrons, the 2P region with 6 electrons, and the 2S region with 2 electrons, and finally the 1S region with 2 electrons. I want to point out that the total valence electrons in sulfur are 6 because we count the electrons in the subshells of 3s and 3p. I'd like to do another one, this time a transition metal, nickel. Here's the electron configuration for nickel. So let's start at the beginning. 1s2 with 2 electrons down to 2s2 with 2 electrons. 2p 6, because we're passing entirely through the 2p region. Then 3s2 over to 3p6. And then 4s2. Then, because we get into the d region, our principal quantum number steps down by 1. So this is actually 3d. So 3d1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven, eight. Likewise, we would start down here at yttrium, not with 5d, but with 4d. Let's do one final example. Selenium. Here's the electron configuration for selenium. Let's start from the beginning again. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, over back to the p region in the fourth period, the fourth energy level. Principal quantum number stays at 4. Now we're in 4p1234.